and welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I kind of have some vlog holly style content. I just am kind of sticking a bunch of things together in a video that I did recently. So recently I went to Glenna's with Stephanie and Christina. A few days later I went to the Seattle Miniature Show and the day after that I got my hair done. So I thought it would be fun to take you along with me to Glenna's, show you a Glenna's haul, take you along with me to the miniature show, and then show you a miniatures haul which you will see these pop up later in my channel. And then then the last thing I just thought it would be fun to show you what like it takes to do my hair essentially just kind of a random mishmash video I figured most of you would be here for the vintage haul so I'd start out with that and then those of you who are here for everything can continue along from there so first thing I obviously went to Glenna's Glenna's is a vintage warehouse that's in Tacoma Washington it is open by appointment only and over gosh has it been two years now that I've been going there I don't know I think I go there two to three times a year it's it's super fun but you can always find something new even though she's not buying anymore and it's just always a really enjoyable experience this time I went with Stephanie Canada slash backroom finds fame and Christina who is on YouTube with with love Christina I believe both of them will have some footage from Glenna's in some upcoming videos or past videos so I will link those down below I will link their users so you can find them we're gonna now get into the footage and afterwards I will show you my little clothing and button haul so Glenna's is this giant, beautiful warehouse of vintage. These are all the rows, which are broken out kind of by decade. There's Christina and Stephanie. And then this area is the garage area, which has even more vintage. Glenna did used to have a retail store, which I feel like you can still see the remnants of in the style that she displays pieces like these. I feel like I'm horrible at filming pieces that I find really inspiring, but one of the things I love about Glenna's is how many inspiring pieces are in here where I can look at the construction and even though it's something that likely will not fit me or I can't get my body in because of the side zip, I can still feel inspired by it. This back bow I think is absolutely gorgeous and I'm sure I could kind of free pattern something like that. Same with this dress with the big tulip. This one is, has all sorts of discoloration issues and also it wouldn't fit me anyway, but uh, it has this beautiful tulip and I love the way the trim is and so it's very inspiring. <laughs> we got fabric. I found fabric. Okay, step. Oh, I was gonna about to say step. Thank you. <laughs> but I was too late. I didn't realize that Glenna's had all these buttons hidden away and I got quite excited. So I dug through every single box of buttons and found a ton of gems. First up for Tryon is this beautiful 80s set. It's a little tight in the arms, otherwise I would fully want it. It is so pretty with the beading and stuff. Continuing along the pink theme and things that don't fit my arms, I tried on this beautiful 70s piece. It's beautiful, but it, again, it doesn't quite fit my shoulders the way I'd like. All right, you have seen the footage. Let me show you what I actually bought. We're gonna start with, it's kind of a weird set to show on camera. It's this beautiful cream eyelet set. I got this to wear, I mean, under things like overalls, jumpers, whatever I desire. This I think will go really cutely under it for those pieces that I want something cream and not white. And it is actually a two piece set that is quite delightful. This piece here is actually an apron. So this I will have to add as a layering piece to some of my other things. And I also think it's just really cute. I love the like yoke detail here and the little ribbon and stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited about this little set because both these pieces are gonna, I think, become my wardrobe staples. Next up, I tried this on last time I was at Glenna's, which was just a couple months ago. Hopefully I can get it to flare out. It's essentially this little slip thing that somebody came on and added uh, an extra bunch of tulle. And I just thought this was really cute. I really like the silhouette and I think it'll work well, just like basic dressed with a blazer. I just love it. It's just like a nice little, little black dress for me. I'll wear it to the theater and out and things like that. I realized I don't have like a lot of like comfy going out for drinks on the town type outfits. I don't even hang out in bars, so I don't really know why I need that, but I have nothing to do that with anymore, so I thought this would be a good solve for that. By the way, I guess there's only four pieces of clothing in this haul, but this is the next piece. So I picked up that really, really light green 
coat in Argentina and I have been wearing it literally everywhere. So when I saw this at Glenna's and it fits well enough, I thought I would pick it up because what I like about this one is it's nice and just a little bit oversized so I can wear more like oversized sweaters and stuff like that with it because as much as I love my green one from Argentina, it is not great from layering stuff under because it gets kind of bulky in the arms. But because this is from the 80s and has like these giant shoulder pads and like kind of a fluffier arm, I think I can wear this with my like Christine Foley sweaters, for example. And it's just an absolutely stunning color. This is a color that I think looks absolutely gorgeous on me, if I do say so myself. And I really love it with my new hair color. And then the last piece is a very different for me, kind of, I guess. The color is my usual color and I am a sucker for beading. And I guess I'm a sucker for these sleeves, but this is quite short. It's quite a short little piece. And I think it is really, really cute. I love the beading. I think it's a great piece. I do kind of have to figure out how to wash this, which will not be the funnest. It's just stunning and it makes me feel really pretty and girly and flirty. So that's always fun. And that is it for the clothing from Glenna's. The next thing I have from Glenna's, which all of those are I think around $200 for those four pieces for a fully wool coat alone. That feels not too terrible. What I have last is I have these buttons. I'm gonna lay these all out and take a photo of them. I didn't know she had buttons and so I went through all her buttons and I bought some of my favorites. There's definitely some I left there that I may have to go back for one day and I think these will be a great addition to my collection. And that is it for Glenna's. Next up, I headed to the Seattle miniature show. It was actually quite funny. Um, we went to the wrong Doubletree Hotel. There are two by the airport and we went to the wrong one and we walked into like an Irish step dance competition area and we were like, this is not the miniature show. And also the like hotel's architecture was super bizarre. It was just, it was really interesting, but we did finally make it to the miniature show. We're gonna pop in some footage from that and then I will show you what I bought there. So first up at the miniature show, there is like the exhibition hall. So these are a bunch of things that people can vote on and I thought there were lots of really fun things. This one is definitely not my cup of tea. I would never make branded things like this, but it's always cool to see what people do make and I love all these like little detailed scenes and I just very much enjoy this type of work. So none of these are for sale, they're all display. Like this garden house, insane. This is kind of what, I liked the garden kit I got but the, I can't move the furniture around and this is kind of like my dream of being able to put something together like that. And I adored this little fairy tree house Although I will say they had a advertisement that you could buy a kit to make this with. This is not, like while I love it, it's not something I really wanna make. This miniature exhibit right here was inspired by the ring, which I thought was kind of fun. And then it's always just fun to see what inspires people and what they like made stuff out of because there's definitely like a proper dollhouse in a lot of cases, but there's also dollhouses and things like bread boxes or salt containers that they completely made over which I think is so impressive. Like this one's definitely made from an old salt container, which is so fun. The reuse in these spaces is completely underrated. This was absolutely one of my favorites. It's like this little curio shop with like the skeleton and the vines and the little tiny paper butterflies and the frames. It was just incredibly cool. And like the stuffed vulture, I just thought these were all so fun. This is the one that I would want to take home. Next, I think they call it miniature acres and these are all dollhouses that are for sale. And I couldn't tell if they're for sale like fully furnished and everything, but it was just kind of fun to look to see what people were selling. I think overall I would rate the prices as having been too cheap considering the amount of work that will go into this. Just because something's miniature doesn't mean it's cheap. And here is some footage of my favorite booth. This is the Twin Heart Miniatures booth, which is one of the biggest reasons I wanted to make it to this show. She does incredibly incredible work and it's all like produce and stuff you can cut open. It's just so cool, as well as all these like kits like the noodle and stuff like that, so I thoroughly enjoyed looking at that. This is just like to give you the vibe of how packed it is in here. This is actually more empty than it was earlier. All right, you have seen the footage of the miniature show. This is my little miniature bag of goodies. I'm really excited. I went there for some of the specific vendors there and they did not disappoint. Uh, so basically you're gonna see a lot of these become projects on channels. I've been kind of collecting or hoarding supplies. I wanna make a series of miniature earrings on this channel and a lot of this stuff is for that. And it's too hard to get my face and miniatures in the same shot. So I 
am going to just talk about these miniatures and there's gonna be little photos that pop up here showing you exactly what the miniatures look like. So this first one is by G Jeannie Lindquist. I'll leave her name down below in a website if she has one. She had all these really fantastic little paper flower kits. So I got some zinnias, some lilies, dahlias and anemones in different colors. And they're like little laser cut sheets that you pop out the flower components and then you assemble them together. So I'm sure you'll see these in a video soon. They're really quite cool. No idea if you can order online, I'm not gonna lie. So next up, I bought this tiny little basket. It has little rainbows on it and it is so freaking cute. It's like definitely wired. I just, honestly, this was such a fun place to go. I love tiny things. I think it was like $5. Most of these people don't have websites. If they do have websites, I will link them. This, I just picked up some little flower pots because my thought is to make a pair of earrings that have flowers in it and little flower pots. And I think it will be really cute. This actually like our vases with lids and everything, but I just want the bottom part of the vase. This is very fun. It's like a little present each time. Next up, ooh, let's see. Did this person put a receipt in this bag? So that way I know who it is. It just says your pieces. Thank you, call again. So I have no idea who, which vendor this is from, but one of the things is this cute little glass pitcher with some mysterious blue liquid in it. And then I have some little hot cocoa guys. We have like a little cat peeking out and just a normal little hot cocoa. I just like, it's crazy. I am hoping you're appreciating how tiny these are here while seeing them big over here because they're seriously so freaking adorable. And then there's also this little like ice cream mochi situation thing here that is so cute. I also got, these are so cute. I got these little, they're like wine bottles and wine glasses that I think will make really cute. They came with like the labels and everything and I'm excited to use them, super cute. And I also got, there's a tiny creative surging book and I can't remember what the sewing book behind it is. But I have some thoughts on making just a little miniature sewing thing that I think would be really cute and I got these to add to that idea even though I don't even really know what I'm doing. Next up is the cakes. So first I kind of have some ideas for some like breaded basket earring situations and I got it's so crazy how small they are. It, there's like a little like chocolate scone thing, a little tiny bread, and some little teeny tiny donut. Like I said I just hope you're really appreciating how tiny and detailed these are. I die every time. So those I have plans for. And then I will say, not that the miniatures there aren't expensive at all, but they're definitely a lot cheaper than anything I've ever seen online. So if you're looking for miniatures and you're on more of a budget, I highly recommend these shows if you have a local one. And I also got a little tiny cherry in key lime pie. This is the cherry pie, this is the key lime pie. The key lime pie is brand new, so the vendor was very excited when I bought one and I told her how much I loved it. I assume most of these are polymer clay, but honestly, I don't quite know. All I know is as good as, I actually have great manual de dexterity due to like all the sewing I do, but it's very impressive what they do. And then I have two cakes. I did a little Oreo cake and this little like tiny rose cake. So cute, again, I can't wait. It's that like I'm looking at myself in the monitor and I'm like, you can't see anything. And I'm like, you're gonna have a big photo here. It's gonna be okay. And they're gonna get to see how cute and detailed all these little things are. Miniature people are just fun. This is Mountain Creek Miniatures and they are very local. They're in Spokane Valley, Washington. So they do have a website, I will link that. And then last, this is the whole reason I went to this miniature display. I'm pretty sure it's Twin Heart Minis. They're on Instagram. And I knew about this show actually from a coworker last year, but this year I actually got to go and I, I can't wait to show you these. I got two little like produce baskets that I'm gonna arrange these in, but I got some like lettuce, little tiny celery. They're so detailed and cute. A little tiny cabbage. And all of these you can like cut into and they look like how you would expect them to look if you were to cut into a cabbage or a head of lettuce or something. And then I have a big variety of bread because again I'm kind of on like a bread idea. And all of these you can also cut into and they'll slice and look like the bread inside. And that is just like, it's wizardy. What this woman does is so crazy cool. I hope she's like passing on her skills to somebody. <laughs> 
Honestly, all these people, I hope they're passing on their skills to someone because a lot of this is like really unique skills. I'm gonna be able to show you this like tomato. You can see like the tiny little seeds inside. Like it's just, it's so cool guys. If you like have the time, even like you don't even really need to spend money to go to a miniature show. They The tickets were $8. And if you have the time, it's so worth going because it's just so cool to see what people are working on. And then from her, I also got some flower pots to make some little flower pot earrings from. I, the pot is a straw that's cut. That's the other thing. There's such creative reuse ideas in miniatures. And my friend and I were debating on whether these were 3D printed or hand molded. When you see the little close up photo, give me your opinion, add to the debate. I think I got another thing from this. I shouldn't wrap that back up because I'm gonna have to take all the photographs. This is so cool, guys. I got this little tiny beet. Like, look at how tiny this is. And I got a whole rainbow of these little tiny carrots because uh, how could I not? I just like scream looking at these. And then I also got, again, some really tiny asparagus. And enough to say, given the fact that you probably got some pretty terrible audio there for me geeking out. This miniature show was a blast and I had so much fun. I don't know if I'll go again next year, but it was definitely fun to go to. And if you need a nice little ad outing and are like amused by miniatures, I would highly recommend going to either the Seattle miniature show, but honestly, there's a ton of miniature shows across the nation. A lot of these vendors like do the tour because like when you look at a thing like Sew Expo, people have to bring like, not truckloads, I guess truckloads of stuff versus to have a miniature booth, you can go a lot smaller scale because obviously their smaller scale. I mean the fact that I had a haul like that just in that tiny bag. But that is the end of this miniature haul. Now we're gonna go into some footage of me getting my hair done. So it is hair day. On hair day I fully expect to be in the chair almost nine hours. I feel like my stylist and I have a very good balance of being quiet and chatting. We have a lot of mutual interests but we're also both introverts so that is fantastic. The first step here is getting my roots all bleached out. We bleach my roots and then use a color remover on the rest of my hair that's been bleached before to try to keep my hair in proper health. This is always one of the longer parts of the process and probably one of my least favorite because it's the least transformative in the direction I want. But once we're done, you'll see with all the color stripped, of course we get to where we need to go. So when I come in, I know I'm gonna be in the chair for between six and nine hours, which is a long time. So I usually come prepared with a lunch and a bunch of snacks and stuff. However, I shattered the Tupperware with my lunch in it in the first 10 minutes of stepping into the salon. So I did have to go pick up lunch elsewhere. This time I also brought my lumbar pillow and I will never not do that again. I'm sitting on a lumbar cushion this whole time and it definitely helped with the soreness I usually experience after sitting in the chair the whole day. So once we have all the color stripped out, this is what it's stripped to. This was kind of not our ideal. I know it's a really pretty color, but we were trying to get it a little bit lighter and different because I wanted to kind of go more pastel-y. This was not gonna allow for a very vibrant pastel, so we had to pivot. So she used kind of like a zigzaggy curvy part for my hair for a split dye. My concern with a split dye is I feel like you have to part it in the same place and stuff like this. And this type of split dye with this pattern allows me to part my hair wherever I want to part my hair. And then I will still see like it's designed to blend together, which is fantastic. My stylist takes a lot of education classes, which means she's constantly learning new things like new color placements. So I'm super appreciative of this. And as you can see, like my part isn't a straight part it kind of zigzags around my head and that's what creates the kind of like money piece and highlight effect you see in my hair today one side obviously going in with the green and then the other side she goes in with the pink after that she of course washes and styles and cuts my hair and all that jazz but I feel like this is like the part of the process that I'm not laying in a bowl awkwardly so I thought I would show you that and hopefully it's a little bit amusing for you all right, so you've seen kind of some of the steps of getting my hair done, and obviously this is the final look. Doing hair like this takes so much time. I sat in that chair, like I already said, nine hours, essentially. It's a lot. I only do it twice a year where I actually go in and do the whole kit and caboodle bleach stuff because I do try to keep my hair um, not fried and I like to, to stay on my head. This time I actually had to cut almost three inches off because I, I have not been the best hair caretaker lately. I'm not 
actually going to redo my hair until October where I actually go into her. So I'm gonna need to maintain this on my own for the next nine months. I'll go in for a couple haircuts. We'll go back and we'll do the whole process again. We're just doing that nine months due to some of the traveling I have planned because I tend to just pick up more hair damage when I travel, so I don't like to travel with fresh hair done. So I'm not getting my hair done until I have cleared all of that travel. But yeah, that is this video. Let me know what you think of this random mishmash of like calls and I don't know, like little tours of different things. Should I have broken this out to a Glenna's video that was short and then a miniatures video that was short? And then I don't know where my hair would fit in that because that would be more like a reel or a, that's not what they're called on YouTube, a literal short. So let me know, let me know your thoughts. And if you have stuck around this long, definitely make sure to give me a thumbs up, maybe comment down below. You can comment those thoughts down below or tell me what miniature did you think was to die for. And if you are new here and stuck around this long, definitely subscribe and stick around. I'm gonna do some fun little crafts with these miniatures. I mean, this is a generally like a vintage crafty channel. So stay tuned for more videos for me. I post every single Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific time and I will see you then. Bye.